Hey there, this is TJR. And this is Robert Kinsler. And uh, uh, TJ, I want to thank you for joining me today. Normally, I know you kind of take the lead on these episodes, but actually I contacted you today when I found out that um, the world sadly has lost um, uh, the, the founding bassist of the Smiths, Andy Rourke, uh, who passed away. He was only 59, died of pancreatic cancer. And, and I think, you know, kind of a lot of people in the music world were shocked. He was actually the youngest member of the Smiths. And, and as we all know, 59 is not that old, especially now when we have musicians, you know, like Paul yeah. McCartney and Bill Starr and Bob Dylan well into their 80s performing. Yeah. Um, so I think it was kind of a shock today to find that out. And uh, yeah, and I'm glad to join you here. The Smiths, I'll admit, a band that I, I know who they are, of course, but not real familiar with their music. I know you're much more familiar, of course. They mean a lot more to you, which which, which why I'm glad to you know to join you and, and give you a place to, to talk about it. Um, real quick, I will say, the Smiths, back back in the 80s, when they came out, the Smiths were a band, one of those type of 80s bands like Duran Duran, that as at that time, I would have dismissed, mm -hmm. you know, being the opinionated little runt that I was, but that as an adult, I hear them with very different ears. Yeah. You know, I can appreciate Duran Duran now. The Smiths, like I said, not real familiar, but I do know some of their, their more popular tracks, and I kind of can appreciate the kind of haunting dreamlike quality of a lot yeah. of their songs i can appreciate that quite a bit now that i couldn't when i was younger but but please um talk to yeah. me a little bit about yeah about, let me tell you uh, Andy why, why they registered with me a little bit sure kind of like you two not that they sound like you two kind of like adores you had four very uh talented musicians that each had their distinctive styles you know how they performed in morrissey's case how he sang and they brought those styles together into something really profound and groundbreaking kind of like some of the great bands that you and i have championed over the years on this channel you know they only really were together from 1982 to 87 they didn't have and they were very young uh but you know they had this really unique sound and what andy brought to it you know a lot of people obviously don't know morrissey's very distinctive voice they yeah. know john mars really shimmering groundbreaking guitar work but he was a really melodic bassist you know came up with these really memorable lines and they really helped fuel and drive the music uh -huh. um and you know if for people that are not familiar with the smiths you know i was thinking about it one track that everyone should go listen to is barbarism begins at home and you know his bass playing is at the center of that song and i think you really get a idea of how he combines being a virtuoso player but also being a great melodic player and um you know his work with the Smiths was not the end of his career. I mean, he played briefly with the Pretenders. He he continued to record on some of uh, Morrissey's solo albums after the Smiths broke up. And actually, more more recently, he was in a in a trio with with where Dolores O'Riordan from the Cranberries was the oh. lead singer, and that band huh. was called Dark um, uh, Dark All Uppercase with periods after all the the huh. letters. I was um, not familiar with that. No. Oh, so, yeah. So, and they came out with an album uh, called Science Agrees. So, and that album is a little bit more obscure, but, it, but um, you know, people might want to check that as, out. You know, if they're a fan of the Cranberries, they may want to check that out. But he was a very um, versatile musician. And, I, and, I, and you see today on social media how sad the music world is, uh, mm -hmm. including when Johnny Marr announced his passing. Uh, via very emotional tweet. C certainly, you know, very familiar with Morrissey for his solo work. And Johnny Marr, you introduced me to Johnny Marr. Uh, I've enjoyed some of the albums that you've talked about on our some of our, you know, our shows where we've discussed new music. I've been, certainly enjoyed those albums quite a bit. And, you know, you've kind of opened my eyes to him. I was not familiar with, uh, you know, with their bass player, though. Um, just a little bit about his playing style. You were saying very melodic. Would you, would you like make comparisons to like say McCartney who was also a very melodic bass player maybe, maybe you know that's actually a good point I think for for within the context of his time because he obviously didn't come up in the 60s he came up in the 80s but I think that is a good comparison somebody that rather than you know unlike maybe a Getty Lee where it's really dynamic and you know flat I mean it was very flashy but within the context of it being melodic and in the service of songs I know you and I have talked about that yeah you know even recently about how I think that that you know it was paramount that all four of these 
uh, players, everything was about it. The focus of it was the song. And oh. that's what to me truly made. The, I mean, you can put on pretty much any Smith song and it's not a clunker. It's going to be a great song. And I think he was part of, of what made that, that successful formula happen was just mm -hmm. how great of a bass player he was and how his bass player playing fit in with what the other musicians were doing. You know, this band has been apart for a long time now. I don't suppose there was ever any talk of them ever getting back together. You know, uh, I think uh, Morrissey always squashed those rumors, I think. Oh. And this is just on memory. I didn't go back and read this today because, you know, I'm just kind of reacting to the news and everything. Yeah. But as I recall, you know, Morrissey has performed at Coachella a few times. So has Johnny Marr. He also performed, I believe, back in 2013. I believe the the powers that be at Coachella had offered them a considerable amount of money to try to get them to perform at Coachella back when it was, you know, a single weekend. So they would have just had to perform one night, but I don't think um, Morrissey was ever going to do that. I don't think the other members of the Smiths may have been, uh, you know, as set, set against that, but there was also some legal things and you can go to the Smiths um, page on Wikipedia and there was some lawsuits and stuff involving okay the members. And so I think there was some bla bad blood there and stuff. And that's kind of unfortunate. Um, and some personal struggles okay. that some of the members were going through, but it's just sad. It's kind of like in the case of the Beatles, when John Lennon was assassinated, all of a sudden, all the, the dreams of all the countless millions of fans about the band ever getting together. And I think th that's the other additional layer that's kind of sad because a lot of us did kind of hope beyond hope that maybe the Smiths might point. get back together. Yeah. Get back together. Point. And yeah. yeah, and this pretty much squashes that. Yeah, yeah. I, and I know the feeling. I understand that feeling. Yeah. Um, uh, any other uh, final thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, you know, j just that the, this is it's very sad, and and like, and maybe it's kind of a, a running theme of some of our episodes when we talk about great music that's kind of stood the test of time. Yeah, as PJ is that if if you want to go see someone, go see them. My my wife and I were talking about earlier today. We although neither one of us ever got to see the Smiths. We had seen all four members. We saw, saw Andy actually perform at a Smiths convention. And we had seen uh -huh. uh, Johnny Marr a few times, including when he performed at um, Coachella. And before we even met and got married and all that stuff, we actually were at the same show in the early 90s when they they performed in, uh, uh, in Costa Mesa, California. So kind of you know, the, and the Smiths were actually uh, Louder Than Bombs was the second album I ever bought on on CD after I bought a CD player in the 80s. So I have a long time uh, love affair with the Smiths and, and a great appreciation of all four of the members, including Andy. And it's sad it, that he's passed away. It was only four albums then, right? Well, there's more of the albums than that, but they only, they actually, my understanding is they only recorded four studio albums as a band between like I said, between that period of 82 and 87. Um, so, uh, I mean, there's some other collections, but there's only four albums. Wow. I mean, that does uh, that does give me pause because I had always, well, I was not that familiar with them. I knew, you know, kind of the popular songs. Um, I always knew there was this very strong following for them. And for a band that has only was around for a few short years, only released four studio albums, that you could actually have a convention in this day and age, a Smith's convention. Right. That speaks a lot about their longevity and their influence and their impact. Exactly. That they had that strong of an impact uh, after all this time. So, you know, it's just something, it's kind of like when we've talked about a great band like CCR, The Doors, where they weren't around all that long, but yet they, they recorded this incredible body of work with some, you know, there's some bands that are around 30, 40 years and a lot of the material is just kind of, forgotten you know these are bands that yeah they they were like these flaming comets and yeah they burned out quickly but boy did they cast a, a big light on the world and i think that that's you know especially true of the smiths what album would you recommend i listen to if i was to just pick you one know, album. I, i'd say any of the four i'd say any of the four um i mean you oh, talk to the, okay. the smiths but but uh the queen is dead and i know is a great album and but i really you know and i did it was that first smiths collection i i purchased it was called louder than bombs and i've always just loved that and some of the songs on that collection but i'd say you know anyone maybe go to your favorite streaming service check out some of their 
some of their songs and see, you know, and, and if there's a particular song that you like, maybe then check out that album. Very good. Thank you. Um, Robert, thanks for sharing your thoughts. And I know they meant a lot to you. I know that uh, this band meant a lot to you and, um, and even losing one member, you know, like you said, there's, you know, there's, there goes the chance of them ever getting, of ever, them ever reuniting. Hey, Jack, I appreciate you uh, allowing me to come on and, and, uh, you know, talk, talk definitely about one, I think one of the greatest uh, bass players in recent memory. He, he, he is literally ranks up there with someone like a McCartney or like a Peter Hook in terms of being this really distinctive bassist whose style works so well within a band that, that had their own signature sound. Um, but in, in, uh, how, how should I say it? The, the combined powers of all the members made that band so much greater than the sum of its parts, as great as all those parts were, but then they elevated to these other lofty heights. I'm definitely going to listen to the track you recommended. I'm going to definitely check out the collection you recommended, and I will be paying close attention to the bass plane, which I don't think I've ever done when I have. Yeah, good. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to give it a close listen. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching and joining us. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next video. Everybody, take care. Bye bye.